This is the new upgraded version of Mock Wheels Basalt Step-Through Fat Tire E-Bike. They've made some great changes on it to really help improve the quality of the ride. So stay tuned here on the Electric Bike Report channel to learn more. Nearly every day as I'm driving into the office, I pass at least two or three people who are riding fat tire e-bikes. Obviously the popularity of fat tire e-bikes is really taking off because these bikes can take you almost anywhere. And that brings us to this mock wheel basalt step through. You see here, the step through frame is designed to make seating and operating this bike easier. It's also good for shorter riders or people who have a little trouble lifting their leg. The bike's shapely contours colorful paint scheme and the fat tire appeal, they all invite you to want to hop on the seat and take this thing out for a ride. Now looking at the fat tires on this bike, it's easy to associate it with off-roading. And a lot of people buy fat tire e-bikes with that in mind, even though probably they're only going to ride it on pavement for the most part. But you know what, Mach Wheel upped the off-road ante with this bike with some really good features. One of which is the 750 watt rear hub motor, which you know, not all 750 watt motors are created equal. This motor working with its 19.6 amp hour battery, it's calibrated the ride over almost anything and for a long time. Now the Chow Yang tires, they have puncture resistant hippo skin design and that really held up well for all of us when we did our tests on the road and off the road. And finally, Machwo offers a power inverter. It, uh, it comes in a case and installs right over here on the seat post and they also offer a portable solar panel that you can mount here on the rear rack. And it's great because you take this thing out in the woods or out in remote areas with you. It can power electronic devices like your cell phone and your laptop, even more unusual stuff like blenders and coffee makers. And the solar panel's great because you can recharge the battery on this bike and keep riding. You don't have to worry about plugging in anywhere. And so that's a really great feature. Now getting back to the inverter, it lets you power devices like C1, C2, USB, 12 volt DC, even 48 volt AC. And it can produce up to 1000 watts of electrical output. The portable solar panel is designed to be carried, like I said, on the rear rack, and will recharge your battery in up to five hours. Now these features make the Mach Wheel Basalt the must have e-bike for camping and for long distance adventure rides. We tested some of the claims, and sure enough, when it came to charging for five hours, it did. It only took us five hours to recharge the battery on it, and that was really, really cool. So given all this, it really makes the whole package 100% something you want to take with you camping or if you're going on a long exploration ride, adventure ride somewhere. Since you won't have to worry about conserving power, you've got the solar panels to recharge your battery, and you've got the inverter to power whatever little personal electronic devices you have with you too. The thing I really love too is the freedom that this bike delivers. After all, with the inverter and the solar panel, your trip, camping trip or adventure ride is only limited by the amount of food, water, and supplies you bring. Now I know I've gone on a little bit longer than typical on accessories, but I wanna make clear that the Basalt itself is a serious contender among fat tire e-bikes in this hotly contested $2,000 price range. Now it's not without its flaws, but it does have a lot that make it a serious competitor stepping to the ring. And we're going to break all this down in a minute in our testing and spec overview. Here's a quick overview of the Mach Wheel Basalt Step Through. It's a class three e-bike. That means it's got pedal assist that works up to 28 miles per hour. And the on-demand throttle, it works up to 20 miles per hour. Now the pedal assist power, it comes from the 750 watt rear hub motor and that generates 90 Newton meters of torque. Now combined with the large 941 watt hour battery that holds more energy than what you normally see on a bike at this price, this bike's gonna be able to take you farther and for longer. And it's, show, it's gonna show on a performance test. Now if you've ridden the earlier version of the Basalt, which has a high step frame, then you will notice the better motor engagement this bike delivers. That's because this bike now features a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor. 
and the torque sensor, that enables the motor to give you more meaningful acceleration because it better senses the pressure of your pedaling as you're pedaling. I'll go into greater detail about that in a minute when we cover the speed test results. The gearing, it relies on the Shimano Tourney 7 speed with under the bar trigger shifter that really simplifies gear selection. The cockpit, it's got pretty good design. It's especially got the right width handlebar that you'll want for getting optimum handling on and off the road. And the left thumb throttle, I think is really the best way to go for e-bike throttles. But the grips, now personally, I'm not a real big fan of faux leather grips because they're more slippery than rubber grips, especially when they get wet. After all, especially when you're riding off-road, things happen fast. And sometimes you'll need to react quickly and the last thing you'll want is for your hands to slip off the grips. But fortunately, grips are easy to replace and it's easy to swap out the faux leather grips and put some rubber grips on there. After all, there's a reason why you don't see faux leather grips on motorcycles. Now stopping power, it comes from the Tektro HD E350 hydraulic disc brakes. These brakes are very popular and you'll find them on a lot of other e-bikes because they are trusted and reliable. Suspension is handled by the Overlord hydraulic fork and it gives 110 millimeters of travel. There's a knob on the top of the right fork so you can adjust the rebound easily, get that right kind of rebound and cushion you need. And you can also lock out the forks for those times like you're pedaling uphill and you want to take out that rebound bounce and have it more solid. Maybe you've noticed how the fork rebounds and can make the ride too bouncy if you don't lock out the fork. Now the Chow Yang 26 inch by four inch hippo skin fat tires, they really help absorb the bumps and they really help make the ride more stable. I also really like the traction these tires gave me as I rode all around the Utah, Arizona desert on this bike. The LCD display, it is easy to adjust the PAS levels when you want to change speeds. Although if you wear riding gloves like I do, then you might need to occasionally hit the button twice. Um, the bar-based readout also isn't my favorite as I prefer percentages, not bars. But overall, it's not a bad setup. Now size-wise, this bike fits riders around five foot four to about six foot four, thanks to adjustable seat stem and the seat post. So all of that put together, I like the value you're getting here on the Basalt Step Through. So safety starts with having good brakes that make you stop when you need them to. I was very, very satisfied with the performance of these Tektro HD E350 hydraulic disc brakes during my 50 plus miles of test rides. In our brake test, the average stopping distance was 23 feet and 11 inches, and that pretty much confirmed what we discovered on our rides about how well these brakes can work and come bring us safely to a stop. Now, using 180 millimeter rotors and dual piston calibers, these Tektro brakes are pretty common, meaning it's easy to find replacement parts, and it's also easy to find a mechanic who knows how to service them. That's good to know because this is a fun e-bike to ride and chances are you're gonna to wanna to ride this thing a lot. So you're gonna to need to probably install new pads sooner rather than later with other bikes because you're gonna be riding it so much. Now my test rides involved a healthy mix of city streets, bike paths and fire roads, also nearby canyons. It was there that I was dashing around slower bikes and pedestrians and these brakes really consistently stopped well, gave me good stopping power. Riding up and down some steep hills where I had to engage the brake for more than 300 feet, these brakes continued grabbing and slowing the bike safely. Now I was talking with some of the other test riders and they confirmed they had the same kind of experiences with these brakes too, which let us all agree that we were satisfied with the brakes that this bike has. The chart on the screen, it shows you the average speed for this bike when doing a lap around the course in each PAS level. Now we like the immediate power output riding in PAS1 on this bike. We averaged almost 16 miles per hour on that one. But the average speed of PAS2, it was a little bit underwhelming because it only increased by 1.3 miles per hour on average. But then the bike jumped back to life in PAS3 and continued to when going into the remaining PAS levels. Moving up to PAS4 and 5, our average speeds were 21 miles per hour and almost 23 miles per hour. And those felt like really good speeds. So some important takeaways about the motor performance in the speed test, the torque sensor. It really makes a noticeable improvement in getting the pedal assist to kick in almost immediately as you're pedaling. 
Also, the motor delivers good power right out of the gate, especially in PAS1. PAS2 felt a little bit underpowered, but like I said, the bike came back to life in PAS3 and 4. And PAS5 was really good at reaching top speeds of 26 to 27 miles per hour most of the time. Now it's important to note that that's a class three e-bike, the Basalt didn't average closer to 28 miles per hour because we didn't push harder on our pedaling during the speed test. When we pedal harder in order to go faster, the torque sensor picks that up and it signals the motor to make the bike go faster. Now, if this bike still had the old cadence and sensor, it would have tried to go 28 miles per hour regardless of how hard we were pedaling. And unfortunately, that would have used up more battery power and reduced our range. But I think this is a pretty fair trade-off in order to get longer range out of the battery. In the range test, the new torque sensor really left its mark, helping this bike ride a longer range compared to the original version of the Basalt. By limiting motor output to deliver only the power you need when you need it, the torque sensor helps conserve energy consumption and gives the battery a longer life between charges. Riding in PAS1 for the long range, low power output portion of the test, this bike went 71.59 miles, and that's more than 10 miles further than the Basalt 1 went in that same PAS level and same test. And the average speed in this test was 13.2 miles per hour. Now Mach Wheel said the range would vary between 60 and 80 miles. So instead of riding only on flat ground, our course had a variety of hills, which made the motor work harder and probably consume more battery power. But still, this bike gave us a range number that was smack dab in the middle of what Mach Wheel estimated it would do. And that definitely put smiles on our faces, knowing the range increase is for real on this bike. In the high power output range test, riding in PAS5, this bike showed a sharp improvement also from the previous version, going 36.8 miles, which again was about 10 miles longer at an average speed of 19.6 miles per hour. So here's some of the main takeaways we got from the range test. First, PAS1 gives a good speed if you need to ride a long distance and you're trying to minimize your reliance on using up the battery. Topping out the motor in PAS5 gives you approximately 1100 watts of peak power. And that will definitely get you up those steep hills and get you pretty close to 28 miles per hour, depending on your size. PAS3, that was really good PAS level to use most of the time giving decent speeds while not using up as much battery power. So like I've said before, the torque sensor, it really helped this bike get a longer range. And again, it highlights how important this change is to the quality of the rides that you're gonna have when you ride the Basalt step through. The hill test, it tells us what kind of raw power the motor can put out for handling monster hills. Now this Basalt showed us it can really climb hills and it showed us on both tests. In the first test, using the throttle only, the motor got our test rider up to the top in a minute and 29 seconds and an average speed of 12.2 miles per hour. Now the throttle only test is often the hardest for e-bikes because the rider is not pedaling and the power output, it relies solely on what the motor can muster. And this motor was able to muster a lot on that part of the test. On the pedaling portion of the hill test, using PAS5, this basalt again produced really good numbers, reaching the top in a minute nine seconds and an average speed of 15.7 miles per hour. Making these results even more impressive is the fact that this bike weighs 77 pounds and it rolls on four inch wide tires, which can add resistance and make the motor have to work harder going up the hills. But this 750 watt motor, it plowed ahead anyways, showing that it has tremendous power. This is also worth remembering because if you plan to climb a lot of hills on this bike, you will also use up battery power more consistently and you'll need to charge sooner too. So be sure to keep an eye on the remaining battery life on the display when you're doing that and when you're climbing hills. All of our test riders, myself included, were pretty happy with the ride quality we experienced riding the Basalt. This was a fun and easy e-bike to ride. Beginning with the suspension, the Overlord suspension forks with 110 millimeter wheel travel, they really helped soak up the bumps. While the Chaoyang puncture resistant fat tires, they also helped cushion bumps. 
Now the tire tread gave us really good handling, whether we rode on the street or in the dirt. And now I've got to admit, I've gotten a lot of flat tires when testing other e-bikes off-road, but the tires on this bike, they held up really well on all three of my off-road test rides, which were about 10 to 15 miles each. I can ride more confidently knowing that these tires can take a beating and still hold air to get me back home safely. Looking at the frame design, we really like that they offer two different frame sizes, so riders can choose a size that works best with their body. The 46 inch wheelbase, both bikes share it and it's good because it makes the bike feel more agile and more maneuverable when you're weaving in and out of traffic, passing pedestrians and slower bikes, or just skipping along rocks and dirt sections. Relying on the Shimano Tourney 7 speed, the gearing helped with acceleration and cruising and shifting with the trigger shifter was pretty easy. One thing we would like to see Mach Wheel work on though is eliminating the ghost pedaling that happens at higher speeds. Now we know that the 14 to 28 tooth cassette that they use makes pedaling easier at slower speeds, but it can get a little bit frustrating when you see your pedaling is not as effective as you reach 20 miles per hour. Now looking at the cockpit, the handlebar was a good size for steering and for stable control. After all, a narrower handlebar might have been nice for avoiding when you're going by walkers, but that would have reduced the great handling that these handlebars gave on our rides. Also with the handlebar, the adjustable stem, it also made easy the task of raising and adjusting the handlebar to fit the rider's need and size. The leather seat, it was comfortable and didn't give us sore butts. Now on the LCD display side, some of the fonts are too small and I couldn't really see the screen with my sunglasses on when I was riding underneath the midday afternoon sun. We would like to see Mach Wheel address these issues and you know maybe offer a different display but throughout all of our rides, the motor, that showed us it's a real powerhouse. It had no problem reaching top speeds and at climbing hills. Now, every e-bike has its certain nuances that make it better than other e-bikes. And the Basalt is better than other fat tire e-bikes in some areas, but it's also not the best in all areas. After all, no e-bike is perfect at everything. Aside from the couple of things we'd like to see changed looking at, this bike, big picture, we give this basalt high marks for ride quality. The Mach Wheel Basalt, it has some great features for riders looking for a class three fat tire e-bike. The design and components Mach Wheel paired with this bike really complemented our overall riding experience. And let's not forget how the optional inverter and portable solar panel can really make this bike stand out and take you to places you wouldn't have thought of going before. Priced below $2,000, we really felt that this bike delivers good value for the money, as well as good times riding. Now, if you wanna learn more about how you can get your hands on one of these cool fat tire e-bikes, click the pricing link below. Mockwheel ships directly to consumers in the United States and to Canada. Mach Wheel e-bikes also come with a limited two-year warranty and returns can be made in the first 15 days. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, then please click like. If you're currently a, not a subscriber to our channel, please subscribe. It really helps us get the word out to others about e-bikes. Also, be sure to click the link to our in-depth written review. It has the details I mentioned today, plus a lot of other important stuff about the Basalt. So that's it for now. I'm Forrest Woolman with the Electric Bike Report channel. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you out there on the bike trails one of these days. And please remember, keep your hands on the bar, your feet on the pedals, and your eyes on the road. And I look forward to seeing you back again here at the Electric Bike Report channel.